One thing that can be really annoying when you're working with dates and times, specifically when you're asking the user to select maybe a specific date or time, is generating these easily so you don't have to write out all of the markup or really just use any kind of looping. So what we're going to do is look at taking a form that you would usually have a date or time selection in and just automating this using date time and making it really easy to update. So by this, let's just take a very quick example and look at this. I mean, if you were to have some kind of HTML document, you would have some kind of form down here with maybe a select box in and into this you would have some options so maybe this was the time let's just create a label here for time go ahead and just update these very quickly now in here you may have say 12 o'clock like so you might have 12 30 go ahead and update these and you could generally just do the same, say maybe 1245, or you might have say 1300. Really doing this manually like this just won't do. It just takes too much time. And when you want to update things, when you want to change the period to between things. So if you want to change them to every quarter of an hour, that's going to be really annoying to do. Now you can go ahead and do a loop here. So you could loop over and just try and be clever about it. But really, this just takes up a lot of effort. There's lots of messy code involved. So what we're going to do is just getting rid of that form, take a look at how we would do this using date time. And this uses the date interval class that we've already looked at. That's remember when we wrote weird things like P, T, and then one H for one hour or period 10 days, whatever. And we're also going to look at a new class called date period. So to get started then, we're going to set a start. This is when we want this to start, when we want the date period to start. So we're going to say date time. Then what we're going to do is set the time. So we're going to set time on this to start format hour. So that's taking the hour of that and then uh, zero for the minutes and seconds. So at the moment we have the following. Let's just take a look at this so we don't get too confused. So we have, uh, regardless of the date, this doesn't matter at this point because all we're interested in is the time. We are setting a time here. Now this means that what we can do is if we wanted this to maybe start at 30, we could go ahead and do that. So if we wanted the minutes to be 30. Now in our case, what we could actually do is say, well, when do we want this date period to actually start? Well, of course, what we could do is go ahead and manually define this in. So we could say, well, when can someone book, say book a hotel? Well, they might be able to book from nine in the morning. They might be able to book from 10 or hotels, a bad example, but maybe any kind of appointment. Let's say they can book from 10 o'clock in the morning. So now that we have our start period, we need an end period and we need to be really careful about this because we want to take the start and we want to go ahead and uh, add time on. So let's say you were working with a date, you would want to clone the start because you might want a specific date in here and then you would want to go ahead and set the time for this as well. Now in this case, we want this to run maybe up to uh, let's say six o'clock, so we'll say 1800 hours. And now that we have our start and our end, our boundaries, we can start to loop through these date periods. So we want the interval, first of all, this is really important. Remember, we want this to be as flexible as possible. So we're gonna create a new date interval like this, and we're gonna define the interval. Now we're not gonna have days or whatever in terms of intervals, we're just interested in the time here. So we're gonna say P for period, time and then we're going to give a time so let's say we allow bookings every one hour and we'll change this in a bit just to see how flexible this is now we need a date range so we're going to say date range and this is a new date period like so and then in here all we do into this class is pass in the start the interval and the end what this will give us are all of the ranges between the start and the end. If we change the end, this will update automatically. If we change the start, this will automatically update. If we change the interval, once again, this will automatically update for us. It's very, very flexible now. So now we need to do is a simple for each loop because from this we'll have a, a loopable. So let's just go and do a var dump on date range just so we can see uh, what this looks like for now. 
There we go. So this doesn't look like much. It doesn't look like we could loop through it, but what we can do is actually iterate through this. And it's only when we start to iterate through this that we will actually see the period. So let's just test this out. We're gonna say for each date range as date. Let's now for each of them loops, do a var dump on the date and then we'll format it in just a moment. Now we have starting at 10, 11, 12, one, two, all the way up to five. And of course, if you wanted to include uh, six as well, because of course what we're doing here is stopping it at six, then all you would do is just go ahead and increment that because it assumes each kind of slot is one hour. So now what we can do is go ahead and format this. So we would perhaps put this into a form. So let's actually just test this out. Let's go ahead and create our markup again. And we'll go ahead and we'll just put a, a select here. We won't bother with a form or anything like that. So this would be some kind of time. And now in here, what we can do, depending on what you're using, you might be using a templating engine or something like that. I'm going to say for each date range as date, I'm going to go ahead and end the for each just down here. This is just a, a plain way of templating within PHP. We have an option like that. The value in here would be, say, date format. And then in here, we would say something like H I S like so. And of course we want to make sure we echo this out and we can do a similar thing just here as well. So now we end up with the following really simple. Now let's say that things changed and we were now accepting appointments from eight till eight and we wanted them to be half an hour slots. Well, in this case, we've got one hour. What we can do is now say 30 M for minutes. And there we go. If we just fix this up like so, there we go. So we've now got eight, 8.30, 30, 9, 9.30, all the way up to 7.30, great. So that just shows you how flexible you can be with this kind of stuff without really having to do much work here. We've just gone ahead and set the start the end, the interval, all of which is very easy to update and will be automatically reflected in the form. And of course, when this form is submitted, you have a format exactly like this, which you could then go and pass straight back into a date time instance if you wanted to. Or of course, it's in the correct format to go ahead and store in your database if you need to do that as well.